Hey guys, welcome back to another Deep Dive Monday. So today we're going to be looking at a section of the Edit Mesh menu. All right, here we go. Okay guys, well, welcome back to a new Deep Dive Monday. And today we're going to be covering a section of the Edit Mesh menu. Under Edit Mesh, you have a section called Face. And under that Face section, you've got um, options called Assign Invisible Faces, Duplicate, Extract, Poke, and Wedge. And that's what we're going to talk about today, right? So let's start with the first one, Assign Invisible Faces. And I'll need a couple of cubes to explain that. So we'll take one and we'll hit Control D to duplicate, hit W to move over and hit shift D to do that one more time. All right. Okay, so we've got three cubes going on here. And what I'll do is I'll quickly slap on some color. So when I reference the cubes, you guys know what I'm talking about, right? So I'll do red, white, and blue, why not? And there you go. And then the blue one, and I'll try to do this quickly. Okay. All right, so um, make faces invisible. Well, why would you want to do that? Well, I'll show you. We're going to take the red cube on the right here, and we're going to go to face, and I'm going to go in, and I'm going to completely delete that front face. On the second one, instead of deleting it, I'm going to go to face, select the same face, and go up to Edit Mesh, make invisible faces, go to the option box, make sure it's set to assign, and click Create. And apparently nothing happened, right? Well, that's not the case, and I'll show you. But anyway, and then the blue one, we're going to leave that alone completely. Now, how do I prove to you that actually something has changed? Well, I can show you that by going into my rendering menu here and just uh, render that in my software. There you go. And click Render. Now, what you'll see here is the red cube has no front face. The white cube apparently has no front face. And then the blue one is as we created it, okay? So let's uh, get rid of that. Now, what if we go in and smooth these cubes? So I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna select all three, and I'm gonna go to Mesh and Smooth. Now, the one in the middle and the one on the left, they look identical, right? And the one on the right, because the front face is missing, looks uh, completely different. But again, what if we go in here and we render this? Well, we're gonna go in and just to make sure we got a refresh. And as you can see here, although um, the one in the middle just has the front face made invisible, it has an effect on how it's rendered, okay? Now, the trick here is to kind of figure out, okay, in what type of applications would you want to do that? And that's, of course, very much depending on the project that you're working on, but nevertheless, this is how it works, right? So let's uh, jump on to the next one. We'll get rid of this stuff, and we'll uh, go in here, and let's take a new cube. Okay, so let's see what we got next. So we're gonna go in and we're gonna go to the duplicate option. Open that up and we've got two things going on here. We can uh, select separate duplicate faces and we got an offset to play with, right? So uh, we're all about faces today. So I'm gonna go in here, right click, go to face, select this one. Uh, it's set to separate duplicate faces and I'm gonna click on duplicate. Well, consider it's a duplicate, it kind of makes sense that it made a duplicate, as you can see right here. Uh, we said separate faces. So let's go into the outliner here. And what you'll see is we now have two surfaces. So if we go to object mode, I got one here and one here. So it not only duplicated that top face, but it also made it a separate object, which is exactly what we want. So the alternative obviously is, and I'll go back, 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 and back, yeah is to go in here to go to edit mesh and to duplicate option box we're going to deselect this guy and we're going to hit duplicate and now i can pull this up but these two are one and the same object which kind of makes sense right and then finally we'll go back one more time when we take this guy uh, we'll take that face again if you go in here and you go to that option and you click on uh, duplicate you got the offset option here, so I can pull this up. I'll move this out of the way. You got this offset, and by dragging this left and right, I can make this bigger and smaller, right? Then I got my local translate Z or Z, which will come on, which will allow me to move up and down. 
and then we've got to keep faces together on or off now in this case not a big effect there because we've got that one face going on there but you can move that as you can see right okay so that's what that is now that's a duplicate uh, option but what if we look at the extract option let's get rid of this let's close this down and close everything down there you go get ourselves a new cube here and let's look at edit mesh and then the extract option if we go to the option box basically same settings offset again and separate faces again okay but there's a difference if i go in here to face select this guy and click on extract it will obviously not duplicate it it will extract it so there you go you can literally take that lid off okay now the question is are these two now separated as an object or not so if we go in and i select the one or the other you can see they have not been held together and in the outliner you will see that you have two objects going on okay if you don't want that as before i'll just go back 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 we got our cube here go to face we're going to go to edit mesh we're going to go to extract option box turn that off click extract pull that up and now we got one option or one object okay all right so that's that and then we got the similar options that we had before and i'll show you that so uh, the options were um the offset okay so we can pull this up we can play with that offset as before and we can play with that local translate okay so that is our extract option and let's jump on to the next one Again, we'll take a new cube, why not? And we're gonna go to Edit Mesh, and then let's see, we got the Poke option. And we've got an option back there. Now, this needs a little bit more explanation. Basically, what Poke does is it takes a face and it divides that up in a way that you will end up with a vertex in the middle. So if I don't do anything special, just select this guy and click on Poke Face, you will get a vertex smack in the middle right here and you got edges leading to that vertex, which can, you know, be used to do whatever, okay? Now, that's pretty straightforward. I'll just hit Control-Z to go back. But the options are kind of interesting because if you go to Edit Mesh and Poke Option Box, here it says that there's a certain offset that you can use, okay? Now, the offset is intended for if you want that vertex to not be in the middle, for example, right? Or not be at that position. So what we'll do here is I'll just set this to one. Let's see what happens. Okay, it jumped to the right, as you can see. That's it, kind of high value. So let's try that again, something lower maybe. Let's do 0.2. Okay, well, like I said, as a result, the, um, the vertex that has been placed is not in the middle anymore. So that's what that is, right? And then you can do that in X, Y, and Z. So one more time, poke right there, X, Y, and Z. Now, then you have the offset space. Is that gonna be world orientated or local orientated? Now, um, I'll, I guess I'll have to explain that for those of you who don't know. Uh, okay, so let's take our cube here and let's rotate that a little bit and rotate it like this, okay? So if I hit W to move this guy, my controls are now in world mode. So regardless of the position of my cube, my X, Y, and Z are in world orientation. However, if I go into my move tool here and I change world to object, suddenly those arrows are aligned with the position of the cube, okay? That's what that is about. So in this case, if I had this face selected and I were to go to edit mesh and under poke option box and I would select local orientation and hit poke face, right? That would be the result, okay? All right, guys, well, and then finally we have the wedge option. Um, last but certainly not least, I think this one is very cool, so check it out. Uh, we're gonna take a simple polygon cube. I'm gonna hit control A to open up the attribute editor. Let's go in and give it a little bit more subdivision. So let's do five by five by five to make it a little bit more interesting. And what we're going to do here is we're going to close the attribute editor. We're going to open up the modeling toolkit and we're going to select multi-component. Multi-component will allow us to uh, select vertices, edges, and faces basically at the same time. Okay. 
So I'm going to go in here. I'm going to right click at a face. Actually, I don't have to because I got multi component on. So there you go. So I'm going to hold down shift and select these nine right here. I don't want that edge, these nine. Okay. And then this is pretty important. I'm going to go in here while holding down shift. I'm going to hover over that edge. I'm going to click one, two, and three. There you go. And then I'm going to go into edit mesh under wedge to option box. And I got arc angle 90 degrees and I got four subdivisions. So let's click on wedge face. And as you can see, this now popped out. And what I can do is I can go in and change that angle. And as I do this, I basically have a harmonica, right? Which is kind of neat. And of course you can increase the number of divisions if you want that smoother or not. You can even go all the way here or make it nice and smooth. And the cool thing is if you go into the attribute editor, you can actually even animate this, right? So uh, yeah, that's what that is. Well, that explains the uh, this section here. So assign uh, invisible faces, duplicate, extract, poke, and wedge, okay? Uh, that's it for this Deep Dive Monday. If you've got any requests of sections you want me to cover, please let me know in the comments, okay? Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done that already so you don't miss out on future videos. And that said, thank you for watching as always and see you guys next time. Bye. Well, thanks for watching. And before you go, please hit that MH button to subscribe, okay? See you guys next time. Bye.